what is going on you guys welcome back to the channel today we are headed to the junkyard the homie Nomis texted me and said that there's a clean EJ2 Civic Coupe that just came into the junkyard and by the looks of the picture man the car is like a virgin it is untouched super super clean I've mentioned this in the build series of Blueberry that I wanted to swap the front end because it has an aftermarket fender, aftermarket hood, and aftermarket bumper. On top of that, the bumper tabs were cut off to accommodate big slicks from the previous owner, and I'm hoping to score this front end to change everything out before we do body work and paint. We're about to roll up to the junkyard now, and I'm gonna go try and find that car ASAP. I'm really not here for anything else. I might walk around, but we'll see, we'll see. Oh man. Come on. This thing was super mint. You have got to be kidding me. Damn. Come on. Okay, well, first thing I'm noticing here white paint on top of white paint on top of white paint there's three layers of white paint here and it looks like the front end is actually off the market because underneath that it's black so resprayed hmm okay I guess that wasn't meant to be I just found something I absolutely need Let's go. Tell me this is the original. Yes. Doors, please. Yes. Okay. Okay. Not a total loss. Wait. I just locked the door. Not a total loss. Now, the only thing I probably won't have is probably for the hatch on the hatch. But uh, I guess I'm going to pull it off anyways to see if it's at least compatible. It's, it's literally like... 110 mil and a rod so okay that's freaking awesome oh and before i forget matt is that a subaru it's a subaru this guy here i mean he watches the channel so that's freaking awesome pulled out this k24a2 and you said you ran the vin on it, it had a hundred 153 000 miles he pulled the pan off it looks freaking good it does have a record of a bunch of oil changes so that's definitely a plus as well too it's funny because isai hit me up yesterday and he was like hey a tsx came in with the front end collision and the manifold's broken so now that i'm looking at it this is the one that he was talking about so good score on that i wish they had like the 50 percent going on man you would have came up super oh, hardcore know, yeah but you stripped it down to the bone so this thing is not going to cost you that much anyways yeah, well, but um yeah that's a score right there i mean I got too much inventory on 24s, but uh, I don't mind having another one, but I'm not willing to put in the work today. <laughs> I try to tell people like you don't need a lot of crazy tools and it like that. Just did everything right here pretty much. Yeah, so everything right, right here on the floor, man. Extended reach ratchet, impact, uh, big boy, and some basic sockets. Um, yanked everything out. Look at that power right there. Transmission, torque converter, and all. You guys don't need a lot of tools. Just got to come in with the right stuff and you can yank literally an entire engine out of the car and you did this from underneath too huh yep, <laughs> no crane or nothing look yeah, at this no crane. I like yeah the crane. just the way i do it's it it's too hard to drive the crane no it by yourself it's hard yeah he did drop the, the the engine straight down because of the subframe being loose but uh he pulled the pan off everything looks a-ok -okay. and uh this thing's ready to rock and roll man if you need some help to lift this up or anything for sure you went throw it on the cart yeah yeah i'll give you a hand with that Sure, Give me. Me yeah, clean it up real quick. I left my tools over there, so let me go grab my stuff real quick. <laughs> That's perfect. Let's get it from here. One, two, three. Yeah, you give me a three count. Ready? Yeah. One, two. Oh, yeah. You're strong, bro. Just shove a little brass in there. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Like he's done it before, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Hell Appreciate yeah, bro. That, bro, if this is clean. I'm gonna lose my shit. Okay, thank goodness. 
I'm um, gonna take off key cylinder, okay? The issue I had with the last guy in the junkyard, he literally broke this entire thing. And I was pissed off because I wanted to buy it, but he broke all the tabs instead of just taking off the Phillips screw. And the reason why I was so specific to the other one that I wanted was because non-adjustable steering column. So it doesn't have this extra hole. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm looking for specific things. I already told the guy I was gonna take it and then he ends up breaking it just to get, just to get the combination switch. The one that's in my car has a hole, but I don't have a lever because it's non-adjustable, so it looks weird. I'm looking for a gray lower steering column panel that's non-adjustable for the steering column. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and pull off these Phillips. Hopefully I have my chisel so I can knock off the rivets on the uh, key cylinder because uh, they are typically riveted on from factory little tabs on each end and then on the other side that comes off and I need to get to let me see I actually need I actually need this piece too because mine is like warped but <clears throat> the little rivets right here take a chisel and you just pound on it until you spin it all the way out to take off this gold brace to drop the key cylinder I'm not gonna lie to you guys, man. This door panel, super clean. Very, very clean. Even the back interior. I mean, front seats, looks like somebody did care for it. Dashboard, super clean. Somebody already took the bezel. I need this as well too, because once I grab this, we'll get rid of the push start. And this is also gray. I bought speakers the other day for uh, Blueberry. And look at these brand new ones. Might even snag them too. The other one's actually on the floor underneath the car, but let's go ahead and chisel this thing off. So I do not, not donut, have a chisel. So hopefully this flathead can do some justice and I can see my nose bleeding a little bit. Hmm. So I got the two rivets off, got the bracket put back on, got the plug taken off of this guy here. It was a little tricky because this little metal piece is like acting like a shield. So I took a razor blade and punched a little tab in to pull that plug out. And this one right here, I don't have a really small Phillips. So I just cut the wire, not a big deal. So this right here, got one matching key. And now I'm gonna pull the door panels off to take off the door handles with the key cylinder. As I was sitting here popping off this little uh, trim piece, I looked over and the ECU is still in here. I think that's a score as well. Yo, another white coupe. Ah, oh, that one's got front end damage. Oh, I'm gonna check it out for sure. So without messing this one up, I'm gonna go ahead and plow through it really quickly. Just so I can get to the coupe in case it has clean fenders. The bumper and the hood is already messed up. And I'm just gonna pile this just in case somebody wants to grab these panels and stuff. So I'm gonna keep it all together here. ECU still here and a great armrest, but I need to go pull off the rest of the parts from the other car. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, Blueberry has a crack on top of the driver's side door panel, and I'm debating if I want to buy the panel, but I don't want to buy both. And I don't want to buy one because it has a different gradation here. Um, I mean, I guess we can always change it later because Blueberry does have door panels regardless. P 
PL6. It's taken off the mirror and I noticed that this thing was like super flimsy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I want it. <laughs> Look at the other side. Wow, okay. Never mind. Okay, well, I came back to the white coupe and I was getting ready to pull off the mirrors because the other one was boo boo, but these fellas were already here first and they got dibs on the mirror. So they already took off that side. I grabbed this one for them. I'm still gonna grab the ECU and I was gonna get the armrest, but you're like, yeah, I got one. Yeah. You, got, you got one for me? Gray armrest? Yeah. Where are you from? from here. Oh, you're from here. Yeah, so, I mean, close by here. shoot. Okay, well, I don't know if I wanna grab this armrest anymore. <laughs> I mean, it is a weird color gray though, to be honest with you. This is a lot darker, almost greenish compared to the gray dash I have in my car. Mine is more like this. Yeah. Not whatever this is. Is yours cloth or leather on top? It's uh, like that. It's like this? Damn. I know this is still money though, because people are saying in the comment section that so, so armrests the are... The ones are, they cost more money than the no armrests. Hmm. Do I pull it? I mean, it still works pretty damn good too. But let me pop the ECU out first. So, me and the homie Nomis always do this when we have like a hard time trying to figure out if we want to do or don't. Flip a coin. It's called Flip the Coin Series. We were supposed to do a series of flipping the coin like, should I build a funny f around car? Flip a coin. But uh, I haven't really got to that part yet. So, what are we calling? Take or don't take? Heads take. Head is takes. God damn it. <sighs> damn, okay. I guess we're not taking the armrest, but... I guess uh, happy hunting for everybody else that wants to come here. This is San Jose North Junkyard, and we're going to meet up with him later to grab his great armrest that he's going to contribute to Blueberry. So uh, I think I'm done. I don't think I'm going to walk the rest of the yard because I got to go to Kel's house. So I'm going to get on out of here, bro. And I forgot this guy. So I'm going to grab this real quick. 110 mil. There. I paid $213 for two door handles two ECUs and one ignition switch. The two ECU is gonna to go to the homie Nomis Industries. If you guys don't know, Nomis Industry is my go-to ECU guy. If you need cop mini conversion, he is the plug. Also, he does like S300s, uh, Chrome, HTS, Neptune, ECU Tamer, all those ECU management programs. He is the go-to person. Right now I'm gonna head over to the homie Kel's house to grab some fabrication material to make an intake for the turbo on the turbo element build. Oh, that's like, just... I think you can work with that, right? Mm. One man's trash is another man's treasure, bro. Oh, this is the donut. Yeah, there's another one. I think this one might work. That might be a little bit better because I'm gonna burn this real fast. So this is the material for the intake for the turbo and Kel is giving me some cut off from his scrap bin. So he's got that right there from a donut. This is the Australia or Aus Australian Australian uh, donut that gives you really tight either 45s or tight 90s or just 45s only. Any angle you want. Any angle you want. Enough. So uh, these are donuts. Look at this. Straight from Australian, Australia. And uh, Kel's hooking it up with these because I need, I need 45s. And he was like, oh, I got some 45 cutoffs. You can take those. And he's going to hook me up with a cutoff. 10 inch four inch pipe and that's going to be i think more than enough for what we need to do with the intake this is definitely going to simplify much better than cutting a bunch of pies on the vertical bandsaw so um so this is what it is what size is this? three, three inch. this is a three this is a donut not do not donut oh, and um angle. any angle you want yeah pretty much any angle but this is a tight radius that's what it is right so um, yeah, he has some cut off. We're gonna grab this. I have a coupler at home, and like I said, I'm probably gonna make that intake today. This is pretty cool, man. It's pretty. It's got some. <laughs> this is beefy, my boy. Man, the RX-7's out already. It's gone. Bam. The RX-7 utilized some of those right there, and I seen that when I came here the other day. So probably gonna head back and uh, get working on this. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the hood of the Element here, and we're gonna build that intake somewhere there without without a filter because i don't have one <laughs> also got this package in today this is the coupler for the charge pipe to the throttle body literally the same one in blueberry because i repurchased the same one off of amazon
ready to make some boost. Okay, so I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to do this intake pipe for the turbo without a filter. And I went online to try to find a filter that's going to be um, like not too restrictive for turbo. And I found a Vibrant 10931. So I ordered that and a lot of people have good reviews on it. It should be here in two days. So I am going to be making this intake pipe and accommodate a six inch filter, which sits about right here. This intake arm is going to be short. The second donut cutoff that Kel gave me, I cut it into two to give me a tighter angle. After trying different positions, it ended up being a tight 90 degree that I made. <laughs> Literally, look, this is lined up. So this goes into the turbo and we have plenty of room for a filter. Filter is six inch, so let me give you an idea here. Obviously a little bit of this is gonna go into the filter so we can clamp it down, but you can see where my thumb is at six inches. And yeah, I think we have plenty of space. Now it is squared, so I might have to trim this back to bring the filter up a little bit more. It might touch this corner, but then again, I can always like kind of move the, the elbow out to clear this, you know? So we have a little bit of play, not a big deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and weld it up. Okay, so this is cooled off now, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I did some really nice welds, some nice bead on this part here, which you're not going to see because it's gonna sit in the coupler. But then over here, you got some booger welds. And the reason for this is because uh, we had a lot of gaps and I didn't even bother like, you know, cutting it flat or anything like that. Um, it is what it is, but it sits on the bottom side anyways. What you're gonna see is, the top side so these are all decent welds these are pretty good and uh, again we don't have a filter but you know this is gonna sit in here and it's gonna go all the way in I can hear it clicking on the turbo right and the filter is gonna sit somewhere here I have worm clamps that's gonna go on here um, something like this and I think I have a second one. Yes, I do. I have a second one here. That's gonna go on. And uh, yeah, so that's gonna steer the um, inlet to the turbo away from the hole, which, uh, you know, if you drove a lower car, we were talking about this yesterday. If you drove a lower car and you pulled up, and then if you just look over, you're like, oh man, massive turbo, right? But now with the coupler in place, you can't really tell there's a turbo there but there's a turbo there. Most importantly, the turbo is directed away from the hole because he goes mudding and you don't want to like splash all that mud and debris into the wheel well and then go into the turbo. So intake, um, 
almost done i will throw some pictures of the intake with the filter installed at the end of the video um but yeah that's all i wanted to do today wasn't much we went to the junkyard we scored some parts not the parts i was looking for but regardless we scored some parts for project blueberry and the homie nomis industries i hope you guys enjoyed the junkyard run and the fabrication of the intake for the turbo if you did be sure to leave a thumbs up and if you guys want to stick around for more progress update on the element because i think tomorrow we're going to do the injectors ecu and the white band if you guys want to stick around and see all that be sure to hit the subscribe button but with that being said thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys in the next video peace